Uh, <clears throat> I was just waiting to see if you noticed that I wasn't talking. Um, you guys can probably tell how happy I am to be talking about gear again because we all know that the stuff you own is what matters, um, not how much you train. That's why it's called Orion Gear Group. Um. <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about the stuff that I own um, because that's what you guys want. Um, tell me what to buy, Daddy, right? This is really cool stuff that I own. Um, it is a Ferro Concepts FCPC uh, V5. Uh, the reason that I own it is because the guys at Ferro eight months ago or whatever said, hey, you dudes seem pretty cool. Um, they've been working with Will, who's one of our guys for years on product development, and they wanted to get other perspectives, especially as it related to breaching. So they sent me the kit. Um, we always want to talk about where we get stuff, what our relationships are. So. Uh, some of the pieces on here I have purchased because I don't want to just continually be like, oh, well, you sent me one thing for free, so send me everything for free. The stuff they sent us for free, we absolutely used and abused and wrote a white paper for them, um, which they seem to really enjoy reading, um, partially because I'm good at writing you know, stuff down, uh, making it sound fun, but also because the, the purpose inherent in the review was to tell them what we liked and didn't like. There's things I don't like about the carrier. We'll get into it. Um, if you watched our previous videos, on gear, you may have remembered that I was running a Multicam Tropic Scarab, which was a one of two run. I had previously ordered two a long time ago. Um, and it had the Ferro Adapt Cummerbund on it. So I don't even have that carrier anymore. This is the main one that I do for indoors movement, shotgun breaching, explosive breaching, and all that kind of stuff. So we'll do a video on this one, and we're also gonna do another video later on on other stuff that I own. But in this video, we're not gonna talk about my rifle, my helmet, my night vision. We will talk about the belt a little bit as it relates to being dragged or carried with this thing. But um, we're gonna just really focus on the kit this time. So it's not like an hour long video where I'm like, and then I got this, and then I like this, and we're just gonna talk about this, okay? Okay, so like the last video, I wanna talk about what's on the front and then work my way around the sides. So looking at the front plate bag, um, we got a lot of cool stuff going on. Um, this is their dope front flap. That's what they called it, because um, they're cool skateboard kits, and it's a dope flap. Uh, they have a really cool system in here that allows for the dividing of the pouch along this axis. So it's like a Tegris sheet that has a um, male and female side of Velcro. Is that called hook, hook and loop? So what the cool kids call it now. Male and female Velcro. We can't say that anymore. Yeah, we've got a transgender placard of Velcro in here. Um, that's probably going to get me boosted in the algorithm too, isn't it? Yeah. This... Of course, we'll get those ads again. Oh, yeah. That was terrible. Sorry, guys. Uh, anyway, I forget what this is called, like half pouch. You know, like some stuff the Pharaoh guys name, like things that make sense, and sometimes they're like, ah, oh, dope pouch. And then they're like, this is a half flap because it's half of a flap. Drives me insane. Um, so this is essentially just an open pouch and this little doodad sticks in here with Velcro on both sides so it's able to be secured. You can put whatever you want in there. Right now I have shotgun breaching shells in it but I could put, you know, candy or um, a map or right in the rain or whatever the hell. It doesn't matter. You can put a lot of stuff in there. I have one of their single pistol pouches and that's actually a lie. It was a double pistol pouch. Uh, only nerds carry two pistol mags on their chest, and so I cut it in half. And I use it actually for my Gerber EOD tool. Um, and next to it on this side, I have a soil eater retention tab, which is, uh, Dan's really innovative. He was like, wow, I can take some shot cord and uh, some pieces of Velcro, and I can charge like $20 for something that costs like eight cents to make. Um, he is actually Jewish, actually, um, so it fits. But uh, this is where I would put my firing device. So if I have, um, you know, a Royal Arms or a Pandora's box or whatever else, I can put that in there. I maybe can put my uh, caps or whatever else I'm working with in here and then just working our way around. Oh, and also this is a fireman's wedge for breaching stuff. I just have that in there right now because I don't have the firing device on it. If you wrote continuing around on the top of explosive breaching, 
I have a soil eater, again, very innovative. It's a tube of elastic um, that's like $35. Uh, I love Dan. He's going to watch this and just punch the air. Um, this is for holding your double lead line. So if you have two like 50 foot uh, lines of your shock tube and you figure eight it up and wad it up correctly, a lot of schools are teaching like wad it up with a piece of PVC or put it in a, a plastic shrink wrap thing that makes this like <clears throat> noise when you pull it out. <clears throat> this is kept on my person without needing to use any other product and it's quiet. So I can just take it out put my charge on, whatever it is I'm doing, and as I back up, make sure that the line's not bundled up. You do that before you store it. This is just making a stealthy deployment method. I love it, use it operationally, it's great. Um, from J Tactical Solutions, I have one of their little universal uh, wing pouches. This has got uh, a bang in it, but you could put you know, a tourniquet, mags, whatever. Uh, I really like this little guy, and it's, it's kind of flexible, and the reason I wanted to put it there is that when I have a lot of shock tube in this thing and it's ballooned out, this is not limiting my capacity. So that is the, the lower portion here. Obviously I have a triple mag placard in there. If you didn't figure that out on, on your own, probably go ahead and stop watching the video. Up here on top, I think they just call this an admin pouch. It's not anything crazy like the, the double you know, alley-oop pouch or whatever other skateboard term. You can fit all kinds of stuff in here. Um, Notebooks, notepad, um, you know, map, whatever else. I literally ate the Skittles out of here earlier when my blood sugar got low. Because I didn't eat the entire day because I was filming for you guys. Uh, right now I have my um, New Testament from uh, Valley OG. By the time this video comes out, I don't know if these will have been sold out or not. But, um, you know, you can keep small items like this in here. And it actually has a little divider flap. So I could put this in there, put my Skittles or my Right in the Rain or whatever else in there, and it's rock solid. Um, they do, Pharaoh does sell a uh, PTT thing that, that goes with their stuff and the FCPC plate bag. But the way I have my stuff set up, it didn't quite work the way I wanted it to. So I just used some shock cord and I attached this... Um, PTT here, this Nexus, with just a, I just did a, like a basically a double cross around it and ran that cord through the Molly field here. So that's top to bottom, or bottom to top, um, kind of everything that I have going on on the actual front plate bag. So let's work our way around to the sides. Clip this in for you guys so you, I'm so confused. Why do you undo the shoulder and not talk about it? One thing I really like about the FCPC is that everything on it has um, the option at least for quick detaches. So one of the things you can buy as an upgrade is this very innovative uh, Tegris drop-in. It kind of looks like almost like a Stingray flaps on the sides and it's got four of them. You fold those into the Molly and it is not coming out unless you try real hard. And then it supports a mini Cobra buckle. They also are working on this with uh, first spear tubes. So you have an option to do a tube cummerbund upgrade as well. If you don't have that on there, there is a tongue on here. It's the same shape and still Tegris reinforced that folds out and you have about that much play in it. And you would obviously just take that Velcro, put it onto the plate bag, drop your dope flap over it. But if you're a cool guy and you don't have to constantly go and rip Velcro off every time you put your kit on, then you're probably gonna get one, one of these QD thingies. Um, be cognizant. That means aware of uh, which way you install this because it has a limiter. So this guy cannot go past 180, right? But it can fold inward, which is what you want. So there's a rigidity there. That means it's kind of stiff. And you can simply plug it in. And there's no like play. It's not sagging. Everything is um, well designed in that aspect. Um, here I have a little custom dagger that we had made. Uh, quite some time ago, and it fits right into the cummerbund. Um, that's one of the things I like about this system, and it provides rigidity uh, for a lot of mounting. But I'm going to talk about that more when I get over to the radio side. So just working our way around again. Um, this is just a swift clip. Uh, this is going to be for a breaching pack or like the uh, Shaw Concepts little mini assault pack that 
clips in, plugs into your back. That's also what this is for. I'll talk more about it when I get to that portion. Um, probably the most critical part of the Cummerbund system and what everyone's probably been waiting for me to talk about. We've already done a video on it. This is Pharaoh's proprietary soft armor. It is cut for them in this shape. Um, if you want to buy some, you can get it at Texas Loot. Uh, this, is, this is the large, okay? So large cummerbund, large armor, and that is how they're made to interface. If you're some kind of weird like Humpty Dumpty shape or something, you might have to buy something different. But um, for people that are uh, proportional, then large to large or medium to medium or whatever it is. One thing to note is that it is tapered. So it's not just a square. Um, that is to help the armor fit and fold and be guided in and to sit naturally on your body so you're not uh, pinching as it comes together. And I'll show you that real quick. These tails come together, right? And they actually touch in some positions. So by having the edges tapered, you end up with no lack of ballistic coverage. As you can see, I have 360 coverage on my side, but there's no pinching or pulling or whatever else. Um, you could compare this to something like Cry has a six by eight soft panel, but if you happen to not just be eight inches wide with where your kit is at, you have a ballistic window, which is pretty much everyone that's ever worn one of them. So with this, you don't lose any ballistic coverage. And it's, uh, like I said, it's 3A, and it's $230 for both of them. It's like 115 bucks per panel. You get them in a pair. They come wrapped in this mounting system, and it mounts via uh, loop. So you have this loop field that it connects to. So the inside surface of the uh, thing here, uh, the cummerbund here is loop, and then you have that hook panel, so it just sticks to it. It's, it's super simple. If you have a Cry AVS or SPC or one of the ones that has a soft um, like internal support structure, this will stick to it. They also make an adapter where you can put this on like the uh, the elastic like three band, three mag holder, slickster cover buns. So working our way just around, uh, talk about the back. So the back of it is interesting to me. One of our criticisms of it was, fam, where is the loop? I can't put a patch on this. And most departments are gonna require that you have four patches uh, showing who you work with, or at least identifying yourself, front, rear, and each side. So, you know, picture I've got my, you know, police patches on my shoulders. I've got one on the front and I've got one on the back. Oh, psych, I can't put one on the back. So something that you might want to consider if you're buying this department-wise is either get one of their zip-on panels that has Velcro, um, or you need to get some Velcro one wrap and run it in between all of these and create your own little mini panel to put a patch on. It's like $1.50 on Amazon for, you know, 40 yards of Velcro one wrap. Uh, made in China by slaves, but you know what isn't these days. So do what you got to do to get a patch on the back of there. Um, I have other stuff I'm running on the outside of this at different times, so I'm not worried about it right now. What you're probably all really wondering about is what is all of this crap? What's it for? Why is it there? Uh, it is just tubular nylon that you get on Amazon. I have a bunch of square knots up here to give me something to grab, and I wrap that in gaff tape or goon tape. Uh, to keep one the knots from working their way out, but also to um, give it a little bit more durability, uh, keep it all together, uh, and frankly, it looks cool, it looks nice. It's uh, two-tone black and tan, who doesn't like that? Down here at the end, I have a climbing carabiner. This is one of the things you don't wanna cheap out on. Um, don't get the kind of thing you put your keys on, get something that's rated for climbing, and it has a actual locking ring so that this doesn't come undone. And essentially what we're doing with this we're hooking this into the belt, the belt which is obviously around your waist. And the reason we hook that into the belt is essentially basic physics. Consider this being mounted on a person and the belt is mounted on the person and you go to drag this kit by the shoulder pads per se. The kit's gonna come up and hit me in the neck because there's nothing limiting movement of the kit down here. It's not like I have a jock strap running around under it to keep it from moving upward, right? So by creating a drag strap that moves fluidly through the plate bag and connecting that drag strap to the belt, when someone goes to actually use this thing, this is how you'd be running around with it. 
when someone goes to use this and drag me, notice how it pulls the belt, right? So it's gonna pull my body from down here and from up here without yanking the kit up into my neck. And this also creates a resting place for my head and it gives someone a standoff that as they're moving or running and dragging me, they're not kicking me in the back of the head as they go. This is the superior drag strap method. Um, Spiritus has some really good videos on this on YouTube. Um, Fred from Counting Coup has some stuff on their channel. And this style of strap was actually made popular. Um, it's been taught all over the military and law enforcement. I had teammates that used it before I'd ever heard of Darcy, but this is the known commonly as a Darcy strap. TM. Yeah, probably so. Um, so we're, uh, what we're doing here is just sharing our way of doing it on this kit. There are a million ways of doing it. If you have a kit that has an open plate bag um, at the top, like has a Velcro opening at the top, uh, you can run this straight through it. And again, uh, Adam from Spiritus has a really good video on that on the Spiritus channel. One thing that's also really cool about running your drag strap this way is that look how easy it is to reset. A lot of times when you have, you know, daisy chain nylon or whatever else, it's such a pain to get back where you want it. Uh, that people don't want to train on it. I know that sounds silly, but that's the reality of what we're dealing with is people not wanting to train because it's a pain, you know, but uh, it'd probably be better to train than it would be to not have knowledge of this stuff and be able to use it. So, that is all we're going to talk about the belt. More on what's on the rear plate bag. So this is the uh, roll one that they made, Faro made in collaboration with uh, Forward Observations Group. Um, it is essentially a secondary med pouch. Uh, I say secondary because it's not big enough to hold everything you need all by itself. Um, so I put a ton of gauze in it, uh, other you know, flat foldable things like chest seals, gloves, um, nasopharyngeal, whatever else. Um, you know, hey, don't crucify me if the COTCCC standards change between now and every five minutes like they change, but the stuff I have in here is what I'm taught how to use and what I would hope that someone who opens it up uses on me. But it's not including a tourniquet. Look at the width of this thing. I mean, it's like, it's like the size of the Super Felony Burrito it is, it was okay. It's big, but it's not like $18 worth. Um, you know what I'm saying? So you're not really getting double shrimp with this. Um, I like it a lot and it's taking up space that I was never using before. So I wasn't, I wasn't putting anything here before. And really this actually supports my lower back. So it's a great thing to have and it gives me more med, but don't think that because you bought it, you need to get rid of everything else. Everything else I carry is in this fanny pack. Uh, and then I also have multiple other tourniquets on me as well. So this is my primary. Um, this is a backup and mainly with gauze and pressure bandages and chest, extra chest, chest seals, if I could use the English language today. Um, all right. Working our way around, this is a wearable antenna from uh, Cattail Antennas. Um, they do really, really good things. Um, they have a discount code for us that uh, will be linked up here if you go to their website and order stuff. Lindsay, who is our comms instructor, um, really, really highly recommends them. She works closely with them on some things and she rigged up my whole comms setup. I'm not gonna get super like into the weeds on how exactly and what all it is, but essentially this is a body worn antenna that's going all the way around through here and up over here. So the actual antenna is a lot, but instead of me having this giant shoot me stick sticking off my back while I'm trying to maneuver, I have the same relatively output, for, but I'm wearing it on my body. Um, that is woven through the same cummerbund setup. What's cool about the way I have this setup and uh, Chris from Faro thought it was a very innovative way of doing this. Um, I say that because he didn't think of it and I did. I don't even work there. So, uh, love you, Chris. This is essentially, I created a box out of the cummerbund that wraps around and it actually covers and protects the radio while giving the radio some standoff. So that means that even under tension, when this thing is clipped in and on my body, you can see the space around the radio. 
Well, that means I can manipulate it. I can take things off, pull stuff out, change the battery, pull it up and wiggle the little knobs and all that other crap. And it's not being pressurized so much so. It's also not hanging outside the cummerbund. So I don't have a big flopping brick. It's not getting caught up on my sling and things like that because the sling is riding over this exterior plane and there's nothing to get caught on. I really, really like being able to run a radio under a cummerbund. And I was really concerned about the soft armor prohibiting me from doing that. So by just putting the radio pouch between the soft armor and the cummerbund, it actually worked really well for me. So we've got front plate bag, both sides and the rear. Let's talk about the shoulders. Um, these are really good shoulder pads, but they are not my favorite. Um, these are from Faro, and it was one of the things we wrote about in our paper. The seam on the shoulder pad is what touches your neck. And a lot of like upgraded shoulder pads uh, that you buy aftermarket like Axle and Shaw and things like that, that seam is higher up where the, this, whatever this is called, 3D mesh foam or whatever the hell is what's touching your neck, not this edge. So luckily the way they designed their kit, um, that doesn't really cause a problem because weight is not really being distributed across these shoulder pads. Um, other than that, they're very well designed. They have a ton of cushion in them. Um, it's not crappy, you know, foam that just compresses as soon as you put the thing on. Um, the way that these attach is pretty innovative. You get some adjustment out of it. Um, and you have the option again of these QD setups or these metal rings. What I've done on this side with the metal ring is use what's called a Molly T hook. And I've put it through the ring and then turned it. So you have a, basically a limiter and it can't go back through that hole unless I was to pull it out, turn it and push it through. And that is actually how I mount my shotgun. So for shotgun breaching, um, I can simply click that dude in, swing it around to my weapons catch on my belt, and I'm set. And that's how I've always preferred to run my shotgun. And I have tried other methods. I've tried the magnets and hated it. Um, I've tried, obviously, if you're running it in a scabbard, you need to go back to 1980. But this is the tried and true method that doesn't flag anybody and it's easy to set up. And when they sent it to us and we're like, hey, try some breaching stuff with it, I was like, how am I supposed to mount my shotgun on this little bitty minimalist plate carrier? You know, I'm used to the big heavy SWAT entry vest and everything else. And then it was like a beam of light. Just, oh, it came to me in a dream. I can just drop a Molly T hook in here, click clack, shotgun's good to go. So this is my favorite setup. Uh, we recently taught a class to some SWAT dudes on the East Coast and uh, we did a module on shotgun breaching because it's a capability they have. And um, this was one of those aha moments for guys like, oh man, I should be running it like that. Because um, it's just so easy. And that's not something that they intentionally made as a design point, but um, just having these modular little things like this really helps their design shine because you can do a lot with it. You can get both of these as QDs. You can get one as, you know, like I have and switch it over. Um, or both of them could be rings if you don't want to have a QD at all. One thing you're probably going to think or ask is, does that QD get in the way of uh, shouldering the rifle? The answer is no, because my shoulder's over here, if you picture it. So the rifle's going right here. Another thing I like about this carrier, it's not overbuilt. It's not overly bulky, but you still get as much protection as a lot of the overbuilt bulkier carriers. I have seen carriers with shoulder pads this freaking wide because they're trying to distribute weight. So let's talk about structural carriers. This one is structured. It has structure to it, but it's not sitting on a harness. Something like the Cry AVS, which we'll do a video on later, it's almost like wearing a backpack frame with armor plates on it. So it's uh, very supported. This is supported because the cummerbund is really rigid and the armor spreads the weight out on you so it's not able to rotate like so. And it's basically hugging you because these are like, these are like penguin arms or something, giving you a big hug. It holds the kit real tight to your sides where your lats are at, which means that there's not a lot of pressure on here. So the weight is distributed across the kit very well because of this design. Um, so while it's not truly a structural plate carrier in the sense that it sits on a harness, it is very good at distributing the weight. Um, I ran my breaching shotgun uh, the whole time at a course just for the sake of testing it. So that was like 30, 34 hours, something like that. Uh, didn't even have a sore shoulder 
typically back in the gap running one of these and it pulling my whole kit to the side. It would make my, I'm running under my right side shoulder uh, and it pull across and it would make this shoulder really sore, even ride my kit up into my neck. This doesn't do that and this kit weighs maybe 40% of what my other kit weighed for the same level of protection. So technology's come a long way. Um, older stuff works great, but you may want to consider modernizing some things. I mean, you just saw a video 10 months ago of me like, this is, I love this kit. I've run it for three years, blah, 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 blah. And here I am with something different. Is that because you should constantly be changing or trying to copy somebody's stuff? No, but you should be seeking to find what works the best for you and then reevaluating it periodically to say, okay, where could I improve at? What's financially responsible for me? You know, don't go spend $5,000 on an AOR1 carrier because you think it's what you need functionally. If you're the kind of person that has that kind of money to collect those things, sure. But we're talking about functional, useful kit. Try your stuff out. I dry fire on this all the time. When I added this radio, I went and dry fired for hours, making sure and vetting that it didn't interfere with everything because previously I was running a radio in one of these pockets because it was so small, little Baofeng radios. So now that I have a Motorola, um, it's bigger, bulkier, and it, it changed things. So go train in your kit, go to classes. That's the most important thing about any of this. If you just buy a bunch of stuff and throw it on and watch YouTube videos, uh, sure that's a start, but you gotta go to in-person courses. Whether that's our courses or someone else's, please go take a class with somebody. Take courses that allow you to be in kit, um, whether that's a room clearing class, a shooting class, do something in your gear to actually vet that it makes sense the way it's set up. Get active, go do a little PT. I'm not telling you to go run 10 miles in your plate carrier in your neighborhood and get arrested. I'm saying do something that makes sense. Go in your garage, bang out some pull-ups. Figure out if things are working where the way they're set up before you actually had to use it, especially if you're doing this at a professional level. So that's my spiel, that's my updates to the carrier. If you have any questions on it, please go into the comment section. I try to actually spend at least the first six months, I'll go through our YouTube channel, you know, once or twice a week and look at all the comments on the newer videos and try to make sure that I'm at least answering constructive comments. There are gonna be people in there and YouTube is way worse than Instagram or whatever else that are just blah, word vomit about something silly. So let's not waste your time, don't waste my time. Be constructive, be positive. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please share it with your friends. If you got something constructive out of it, you know, maybe you just thought it was cool, maybe you like Pharaoh stuff like we do, share it. Um, like the video, subscribe is really what's going to help us out. And word of mouth is what keeps small businesses like this going. So if you enjoy what we do and you want us to stay around, support us in some kind of way, the, the, the easiest one is to share the video and subscribe. We really appreciate you guys, we appreciate that uh, we've been so supportive and able to grow this much. And we look forward to sharing more videos with you. Thanks.